Do you love your neighbors, but secretly kind of wish you could give them some neighborly advice about their decorating problems? Well, on today's show, we're going to live that dream as I help my neighbors make over their family room. Why don't you grab one of your neighbors and watch the show together? I wanted to stop by Chris and Julie's today to get some measurements and to take some photos. I met with them about a week ago, and like all married couples, they each have a different vision of what they would like for their family room to look like. You're going to love these guys. My husband Chris and I moved in over seven years ago into this house, and it was much larger than the one that we came from. So we had a lot of rooms that we had to decorate and furnish, and some of those rooms got some quick added pieces that we expected to be short term and short lived. And here we are over seven years later and we've still got some of that furniture. And one of them is our family room, which I really want to redo the entire room. Colors, everything can go. There's nothing that I'm, I'm holding near and dear that I, that I won't let go of. So I uh, spoke to Vicki, that's a great thing of having her next door, um, about helping me out and using her expertise to see what she could do with this room. I've got a corn plant in the corner, which I've had for a very long time, uh, but it does take a lot of space in this room and it, you know, blocks the windows. I'd love to open that, open this up and be able to utilize that space a little more. Excuse me, don't really care what y'all are talking about down there, but the Christmas tree has to go in that corner, but I don't really care. And uh, yeah, I'd like to be able to utilize that space a little more and maybe add some additional seating. Uh, we entertain a lot in here, so we'd love to have more options for people to sit when we've got folks over, maybe an additional sofa by the window. Um, warm up the colors. I definitely um, want to make sure the room feels comfortable. I know the sconces on the walls, they're kind of outdoor looking. I'd love to have those be a little warmer, um, a little more. Are you guys speaking about the lighting? Don't forget the sconces have to match all the way up. But again, I don't really know much about decorating. <laughs> I know that a lot of this room sort of centers around the TV. I'd, I'd really rather it center around the fireplace, but um, the TV is used often in this room and, and sitting in front of it. Um, I imagine that's difficult for Vicky. So Vicky, you can always get creative and it's a lot of space. So if you have some creative way to use it. Okay, I do have an opinion on this. The TV stays. Good luck, Vic. You know, my mother always told me, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. I think this is the perfect example. Trying to please Julie and Chris, you know, the guy with no opinion, it could be quite the challenge. So let's take it step by step. First of all, the walls. The paint is in great shape in here, and this is a good neutral color. And if we were to repaint, we would be in for a really big job because this same color goes all the way up the first floor, second floor, and into the third floor. So we're going to make it work just fine. Now, Julie said she loves lime green, and that's the punch of color she wants. But we have to tie that lime green in with the red faux finish in the casual dining area and in the kitchen. Could be a challenge, but we can make it work and not look like Christmas. Now, the walls are going to work okay for us. The windows, eh, we got a problem. The windows bring in a lot of light in here, and they also reflect into the TV. We're going to have to decide exactly where the light's coming that's interfering with the TV and decide what kind of new window treatments we're going to do. But that shouldn't be too big a problem. Now, the furniture. They have a lot of guests that come, and they like to entertain in here, watch TV, really relax. So the furniture has to be comfortable. It has to be durable. And let's don't forget, Morgan... Their little dog, she loves to climb around the backs of it, so we've got to make it something that is easy to keep clean and durable for her. The rug, well, the rug is going to go wrong shade of green. We can never make it work with the lime. And the lights, well, we can do a lot better than this. And you know what? Chris is wrong. They don't have to match all the way up. After all, he's not the decorator. 
we'll get some great lights for this. And on that corner over there, well, that needs a great piece of furniture to give it some height and really bring your eyes up from the floor. So that's going to work there. Let's see what's next on my list. Up oh, the fireplace. A lot of builders put this great kind of uh, portrait molding on the top so where the fireplace is, thinking it's a real nice architectural detail. It's a nightmare for designers and homeowners because what do you do? Do you hang something that covers all of it or do you just do something small? Well, that mirror is hung way too high to start with. It's reflecting absolutely nothing. Our budget doesn't allow for us to buy a fantastic piece of art to fill up that space because that's what I'd really love to do. So we'll have to find something that's kind of fun and funky that brings in all the colors we want to work with. And, you know, speaking of money, we probably have a budget and we need to know what that is and we need to stay within it. But then you know what? I'm not going to really worry about the money too much because I just love spending other people's money. When we come back, I'll frame that wall of windows with fantastic draperies. Chris and Julie want to update their family room and create a great space for entertaining. As you can see, I've really cleared the decks in this room. I've taken out all of the furniture and that's a great place to start. It doesn't mean that you have to throw away everything you have and start over, although that would be nice. What it means is if you take all the furniture that's in that room out, then you can really study the space. You can really look at it and say, what is it that I love about this room? Is it the fireplace, the bookcases? Then you start thinking totally different. Your next step is layout. What do I mean by layout? How are you gonna use this room and who uses this room? For example, do you have kids? Do you have dogs? Do you like to entertain? Are there two of you in the house or half a dozen of you? That's going to determine how much seating you need. That sets the floor plan for where your furniture pieces are going to go. Now, Chris and Julie, they have a lot of friends, and they love to entertain. They also have a dog, Morgan, so we had to consider her when we were selecting furniture as well as fabrics. I decided that we needed as much seating as possible in this room. So I selected a nice large sofa that we're going to put in this area right here. Then in front of this wall of windows, a chaise lounge. Why a chaise? We want two pieces that are comfortable and upholstered, but you can't use two pieces in the room unless the style or the wood finish is different. Remember that. Then I'm going to put two chairs side by side right over here. That's always really comfortable. You know, people who don't know each other, they feel more comfortable to sit down in the chairs like that. Then we're going to have a nice coffee table in the center and two stools that we can move around for additional seating. Those are our major pieces. So that's how the layout's going to come together in this space. The next step in our decorating process is color selection. If you need to work with existing furniture or maybe wall colors, that's where you have to start because we can't always throw everything out and start over. Julie has a great red kitchen. She loves it and she wants to keep it, but she'd like to add a punch color of lime into this space. That's where a decorator gets challenged, but not if you think about fabric, because fabrics are the best way to tie any two spaces together. Let's start with our main furniture. For our furniture pieces, I selected fabric that was very durable. It's all in neutral colors. This is an ultra suede material, which really cleans up perfect, although it looks like real suede. This is a great linen, can take a lot of abuse. It's really a good, sturdy, natural fabric. This, a woven piece, neutral colors again, and that punch color of lime. So how do we tie these in with this room? Well, take a look at the prints that I have over here. I decided for Julie's drapes that I wanted to do really big, tall drapes. So I needed a dark, strong color to anchor that space. I'm gonna go with a dark brown linen. But the bottom half of those curtains to break up that 151 inches, we're going to add 36 inches of print. I selected all these different prints to work with. All of these would have worked, but let me tell you why they didn't work for us in this space. This one, too dark, too heavy. The paisley color in it, it just wasn't as useful as Julie and Chris are, so I thought this was too old for them. This one, a little bit too much Tommy Bahama Tropical, although it had some good colors working for us, we passed on it. The two choices we had for final runoff was this one, which is fun, it's got a lot of great colors, it has Julie's lime green in it, all the neutrals that we're working with, and the red from the kitchen. But when I showed this choice to Julie, she thought it was too flowery for her, too many big old flowers. So we set it aside and we went to this fabric. 
This is a lot more fun, and it's because the background is white, that's what lightens up the mood. That's what makes it more youthful looking. We have the lime green. We have all of our neutral colors in it. So this is the one that we're going to use for the bottom half of our drapes. And the bottom half of those drapes, well, come look at all the drapes. They turned out gorgeous. Now, Brenda created these great drapes for us in her workroom, and I am thrilled with the way they turned out. What do you think, Andy? They're just beautiful. Yeah, I love them. I really like this fun fabric down here on the bottom. Uh -huh. And this welt here really adds detail in it there. It is that the... dressmaker touch Absolutely. that's really, really popular nice. right now. Think about that. Add a little bit of detail. Doesn't cost that much more, but it really sets it apart. Now, Andy's our great drapery hanger, and originally these were right at the top of the first bank of windows, and it made the room look kind of squatty, and this is a great grand <laughs> wall of windows and a big high ceiling. So to add to the drama, we decided to raise this pole up to the bottom of the second row of windows, and I love the way it turned out. Yeah, it was really good. We were able to use the same hardware and same pole just to extend the draperies on up, so uh -huh. it really worked out good. If you, you want to be sure that you've got enough brackets and everything to hold this much weight though once the draperies get so long they're 151 inches long That's heavy. they get started getting heavy especially if you were going to traverse them back and forth uh -huh. then you would really have to have a bunch more what brackets says, right, in. Is that up there? that's an inch and three eighths wood pole okay mm -hmm. and that gives us a lot of strength for yeah this. that's pretty much a two inch pole would be the next size uh -huh. um, so you might that think can get about a little that. clumsy but right, we were good to right. reuse it and anytime you can reuse your hardware you're going to save yourself a lot of money that's right. thanks Andy you did a great job Thank for you. us now that we have our foundation in place, we're ready to bring in our furniture. When you can't find the perfect piece of furniture, why not make it yourself? I'll show you how easy it is to slip cover an ottoman. Chris and Julie's new family room is going to be the talk of the town. All of the furniture fits beautifully into this space. I couldn't be happier. And the coffee table, you'll have to agree, it's a real showstopper. Now this coffee table was designed by that PBS duo from the Antique Road Show, the Kino Brothers. Recently at the High Point Furniture Market, I had the opportunity to spend some time with them. That's when I fell in love with this piece. Take a look at their new furniture line. I've always been a big fan of your work on Antique Roadshow. It's always been fun. I've learned a lot about furniture. But today we're here, we're talking about the new collection that you have. And it's not antiques, it's brand new. And I can't wait for you to introduce me to it. Thank so you. tell me about well, it. Vicki, as you know, we, we love furniture. We live I've gotten for it. that over the years, yeah. <laughs> it's, our, it's our passion. So, and Lee and I also in our careers for 30 years have looked at furniture how to judge it, evaluate it, what's a good piece, a better piece, and what's the best. Uh -huh. or, or even a masterpiece sometimes. And so here, we've been able to collaborate as a team for the first time, the two of us, and take all those ideas that have been bubbling in our heads for 30 years and put them, realize our dream. Put so them, all those conversations over a bottle of wine about if I were doing <laughs> right, it, this two, is what I would do? Two okay. Bottles, right. Well, this coffee table, I absolutely adore it because it combines two of my favorite uh, materials, wood and metal. Well, thank you. We love, uh, this is, we love woods, as Leslie said. We this is the excess, wood. we call this. Yeah, we call this the excess because obviously the base, the base has uh -huh. this beautiful shape of the X and the S. But it's, it's the, the, the top is olive burl ash. And we love the figuring because it's like a painting. You know, like it each, is. Each table's going to be completely different. I think coffee tables need to come in all sizes. So I was really thrilled when I saw that you have not only this beautiful square piece, but this great rectangle. Yes. Because yeah. a lot of times, you know, your home, you just got to have these options. Well, this is called, we call this the fine point. Okay. And the serpentine line, we believe, is the most beautiful line in nature. And that's the curve that we have going on. Exactly. And in sculpture and in people. So yeah. this S-shaped curve with these points. And based on the curve in a lady's back. And not a guy's back. Uh, that's <laughs> a real strange. We love that. Yeah. Uh -huh. curve. That's a very human anthropomorphic yes. curve. And now what kind of wood are we talking about here? This is an uh, awesome. 
which is like a rosewood. It's oh, often beautiful. wood. And we love the movement of the serpentine cur curves that, that goes back to antiquity and uh -huh. also to Chip and Neil and Queen Anne. But this is, a, we've modernized it. We've made, made it more fun and playful, almost like it's going to dance away. Well, I think, okay, know? now, if I am just starting to experiment with this furniture and this style of furniture, how can I incorporate, what kind of settings can I bring this kind of table into? Well, a, a piece like this, we feel, can stand out in a, in a modern setting. You can have, uh -huh. uh, you can have very, very uh, well, it's streamlined furniture with okay. it, and it's it's set off with this dark color. We have a lighter version also with its with its lines. It's a contrast thing. I think having exactly. contrast in a room. Well, I love really the fact helps. too that you don't have any hardware on this at all, so you don't have to fight yes, it with making exactly. that decision. Thank now, you. the round coffee table now, this, again, the classic yeah, shape. Yeah. Th this one's kind of interesting because. Uh, as you walk around, I invite you to please look at the woods. I've got all different woods. Look, look, right. look, look at look this. Around, you can actually move and see that it changes. At every angle, we can pick, we can this pick up. it up and spin it. For the, and we, we can spin, and spin it, sitting spin there around. around. See how that changes. See all the different colors. I'm always telling my viewers, don't make it matchy matchy. If you've got a dark bronze coffee table base like we looked at over here. This is perfectly well, well, fine. Well, with, with, with this think. table, we try to make really a, like, like a floating table, right? And also, we love the, this arch and perfect arch and these very delicate legs. And we also like race car driving. We race vintage I cars. I was reading that yeah, about you mind. guys. Thank Who you. knew you were race car drivers? Well, the, 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 the bodies of those are hammered aluminum. And we love this because it is aluminum. Well, that's uh -huh. a racing curve. It's, that's a, a parabolic curve. It's a racing curve. It has a real over. touch of the hand, though, to it. That's yeah, what I like. It's yeah. not machined looking. Right. It is you want one piece that stands out in the room and, and contrasts with other pieces, stands out like a work of art. We think this yeah, one does. Right. This is waterfall yeah. babinga. Let's look over here at this okay. chest. Okay, please. Let's now, this is, Leslie and I, we keep saying this over and over, we love wood and we love texture. And if you, oh, you, you touch this, you can just... Good. Mickey, you can love touch it. Feel this contrasting tiger maple and 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 plain maple. Uh, this, now you can really see inside. Look at that. Look, look. how beautiful that is Bir inside. Thank you. Birch is birch birch stained tiger steel. maple. Uh, and stainless steel. So we try to, so, so it's important to us to have pieces multifunctional. Absolutely. You can see here, this we have a, drawers, this could be a this, bar, it could be a top this It could be a, for a dining room, some people, martinis. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there or, you go. Or, or orange juice or coffee. But you can put a, over on the top, oh, you can actually Martin. put a flat screen. <laughs> <laughs> you like that better? Yeah. You like it? Uh, on flat the top, screen. a flat screen yeah. TV. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Another okay. set of stack tables, but I love the way that these just cascade out of there. Yeah. Tell me about well, that. Well, this is a, a, you know, we all know about nesting tables, right? Uh -huh. And we all are removable. I'm usually losing the little one because yeah. my, my son or daughter takes it away in their yeah. room. Well, this way they can't do that. Uh -huh. <laughs> these, They're locked they, out. These are all hinged uh -huh. with these incredible brass hinges made at the foundry. Theodore Alexander has its own foundry, which is great. And it's really engineering feat to do that. But we feel multifunction multi-purpose as a way to go. This is a waterfall of flamed so wood. Is that like that? Good match. I like that. What do you like about it? Here's what I like about it, is I like to change a lot of collections. I always tell my viewers, if you collect things, let's say paperweights, whatever, don't keep them hidden in a closet. Get them out, display them. This would allow you to change your collections, exactly. bring it out. You've got nice sturdy base here for a beautiful lamp, and then display your items down here. Just a great seashell would look fabulous just laying on the top Thank of that. You. This has been so much fun, guys. You get to take a look at this Thank new you. material and look at this. Thank I can't wait to use one of these pieces in my next makeover. <laughs> Thank you. It's good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Lee and Leslie are so much fun, and yes, they have that much energy all the time. I love their collection, and I couldn't wait to incorporate it in one of my rooms. Now, for this side of the space, I wanted a couple of cubes that we could move around for additional seating. Couldn't find the color I wanted, but I did find two brown ones at the discount store, so I decided why not just slip cover them in some bright lime green. It's easy. Take a look. To upholster my cube, it's an 18 by 18 inch cube. So I cut a piece of fabric. Now this is indoor outdoor fabric, so it's perfect for laundering and it'll really wear well. And it happens to come in a 60 inch width. And to do that size of cubes, that's the size you need. So I cut a 60 inch square and that would be plenty of fabric to cover my cube with. Now, the way you get it to fit, I've already got the other two sides fitted, but I did it exactly the same way. We are doing a custom fit on this. And you could use straight pins for this, but straight pins, uh, you gotta be careful, you don't wanna stick them into your leather. So instead, I'm using like a little punch gun, and I'm just gonna stick this needle into there, 
pull the trigger and it puts a little tiny tab in there. See that little tab? I can sew right over that and take them out after I'm done. All they're doing is taking the place of the pens. So once you get one corner, then go over and do the other corner. And you don't want to pull it skin tight, but you don't want it loose. And then we're just going to go in here, add another little tab like that. I'm loving these little tabs. They really make this easy. Come on down about an inch. Now make sure your finger is not behind that little um, needle that's coming through. Come on down and do the same thing. And then we're just going to continue to work our way down this side, fitting back and forth, back and forth, all the way across. Now, once we get that down to the bottom, and yes, all this is going to be trimmed out of here, we're going to take them all the way down, get to the bottom of it, slip it off of your cube, but don't go to your sewing machine and rely on these as your stitching line. Instead, take a ruler, lay it down across the top of these little tabs, and use a pencil to draw yourself a guideline. You want to make sure this seam is nice and straight because if it's the least bit wavy, it's going to look like a real rookie job and that's not what we're after. We're after a professional upholstery job. Let me spin this around and it's just a straight sewn seam. Take a look over here. This end I've already done. See how we just came along and I just stitched right along here. See it right there and over here the same way. So do two ends, put it back on your cube, do the other two ends like I was showing you how to do. Sew those seams, take your scissors, don't trim it too short, and then just trim away the excess fabric. And once that's done, you're ready to put the hem in the bottom. Once you have the four sides sewn together, trim out that excess fabric like I showed you on the other two seams. Then turn under about two inches for your hem. You can use that two-sided tape I was telling you about so you don't have any seams along the bottom. And then just slide it right back down on your cube. Wiggle it around so you can get it nice and centered up on, on your cube and have your side seams in the right position. And that's all there is to it. You can make your own slip covers for any size of cube that you have. Or if you find a great discount one like I did, you can make it look like a designer original. Lighting is so important in any room's decor. I can't tell you how many rooms I've seen that could be greatly improved if they just changed the lighting, this room included. Before we had two sconces on these walls and they look like outdoor fixtures instead of interior lighting. We decided to change those out and get something much more decorative. Hey Jim, that's looking great. Yeah, it really does. It looks good. It adds a lot. And you just put it up with electricity that was already there. It's yeah. no big problem at all. Made a big difference too. Those old fixtures, they definitely had to go. I mean, I love this one. Uh -huh. Now, you're usually crawling around under the house or up in yes. the attic doing work, so do you like this kind of work? Yeah, this is nice. You know, you put this up, it adds a lot to the room. You know, it's, it's fairly easy. There's no getting dirty and sweaty. So, yeah, this is definitely <laughs> this the is nice part kind of, of the stuff. job. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, I do have a dirty, sweaty job for okay. you. Well, and I'm that is, willing. we need a floor plug in this room because mm -hmm. we can't take electricity to a floor lamp or a right. table lamp without it. So how entailed is that and how expensive is it going to be? It's actually probably one of the more economical ways to do it because we are in a two-story room. So to put recent lights in the ceiling is going to take a lot of effort. We can put a floor plug pretty much any, any place in the room. Um, we want to be out at least four or five feet so that we can get under a couch or a carpet or something okay. like that. But it's a really good way to warm up the room kind of inexpensively. Okay. Well, if you'll check out below, we'll see if we can do that and okay. I'll tell you where we want to put. Cool. Sounds Thanks, good. Thanks, Jim. Uh -huh. Once you have all your lighting in place, then it's time to put some accessories together. Now, don't get frightened about that idea because it's really quite simple. Let's take, for example, the fireplace mantle. Start just like I started with the room. Clear it all off, start with a blank slate, and then start adding things just a few at a time. I selected a large declay. Now, a declay is a very affordable way to put some great looking art in your rooms. And this piece, if it was an original, would probably cost 10 times as what we had to get for this because we had a little budget. On the sides, we've accented it with some glass and pottery vases, bringing the colors and working them from the painting all the way around the room. We did the same things on our shelves. We used plants and trays to disguise things like speakers, and we were very minimalist when it came to our top shelves. Just put something simple up there. You're not going to get up there and get it down every day. On a coffee table, think about using a tray to anchor all the things that you have. Like we've got some fresh hydrangeas on the table. Always love fresh flowers in a room. And the tray keeps it nice and clean, and we don't have to worry about water damage on our wood tables. Once you have your accessories in place, you will really be thrilled with the way your rooms turn out. My challenge was to update Chris and Julie's family room and still keep it casual enough that they could actually enjoy the space. 
The old furniture, rugs, and draperies, well, they'd seen a lot of wear and tear. It was definitely time for a change. I started with a new neutral colored rug. I had custom draperies created, and then we hung them higher than the existing drapes. Well, I'm happy with the way it turned out, but the true test is always the homeowners. Hey, Julie, Chris, what do you think? Wow, Vicki, this is fantastic. That looks great. You really like that looks it? Great. I love it. I love it. Cheers. Thank you Cheers so to much. You. It's it's bright and airy, and it feels very comfortable and casual. Well, that was our goal. Yeah. Just yeah. to make it relaxed. I There's love a it. television still back here, right? Don't worry, Chris. <laughs> we kept your TV right there. You didn't make for many demands, but that was one that was important to you. It looks fantastic. So, Vic, what room do we do next? Oh, it's always one more project, <laughs> isn't it? Join us next time when we will show you how you can get the most out of your home and garden. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. Cheers. If you would like additional information about today's guests or project ideas, please visit us on the web at foryourhome.com. We will do our best to help you out.